So when you talk about taxing and spending, we're talking about the basis for how the government uses money. Now we're going to talk next week about the different forms of taxes, how they can be imposed in different ways to do different things. But in general, we're talking about when a bill is passed into law, the ways that it will both raise money by taxing citizens and spend money in the ways that government spends money. The big key term here is the deficit. You hear this term thrown around a lot, mostly for political reasons. Each piece of legislation that is proposed is assessed by the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, which is a group of nonpartisan accountants and analysts who will decide, determine, based on their research, what they think will be the effect of a proposed law. So they might say, here is our analysis and what we think will happen after a year, after five years, after 10 years, after 30 years, and what the effects will be on the deficit of passing this law when they're studying one. The deficit is just the difference between the amount of money that will be spent by the government and the amount of money that will be brought in via taxes. So if that's a negative amount, it's a deficit. Now it's possible to pass a law that will bring in more money in taxes than it spends, and that wouldn't create a deficit, that would create what's called a surplus, so extra money. But often we find that most programs that are imposed by the government spend more money than they bring in in taxes. Thus, they run a deficit. Each year, the government usually runs a deficit. All the deficits get added together, and that's what creates the national debt. So the national debt just keeps growing because each year a, a deficit is run by the government's spending. For example, if I wanted to pass the National Chocolate Milk Act, and it was found that my National Chocolate Milk Act that would give every household a big gallon of chocolate milk every week would cost $100 million a year for the government to purchase all that chocolate milk and then distribute it to every household. Now, if they found that the tax associated, so I said, oh, don't, don't worry, the bill also has a one cent tax on every person per year who lives more than two miles from a cow. If they found that, sure, yeah, that tax is great, but it only raises $50 million, but this law will cost $100 million, that's going to create a $50 million deficit, right? That's the difference between the $100 million and the $50 million raised. So that's a $50 million deficit. Now, I might say, oh, but in 30 years, there will be a lot more people living more than two miles away from a cow, so a lot more people paying this tax. So in 30 years, this tax will raise, say, $80 million. That's great. Then there'll be a smaller deficit in 30 years from this law, but it will still be a deficit. And by then, it will have raised a lot of money that will have added to the national debt. If you want to look at the national debt, I put a link on Schoology that goes to this debt clock, and you can watch it rise. This is a screen cap from this morning, but this number is kind of constantly raising so you can watch it rise in real time if you want which is kind of fun currently you can see it sits a little over 27 trillion dollars that's not unusual the debt has been added to every year with a handful of exceptions pretty much since the start of the country if you look at these deficits by year over the last 50 years or so you see that there were four years during the clinton administration in which there was a budget surplus so he actually managed to balance the budget and raise more money than the government spent for four years. Now that doesn't mean that the national debt went away, it just means that they didn't add to the national debt for these four years. Of course, that changed once a new president came in, George Bush came in and went back to doing what every other president does or every other administration, which is to run a deficit. These big spikes here, this is the financial crash of 2008. So there was a big stimulus bill, a ton of money was spent, pumped into the economy to try to prevent it from collapsing. Back in 2008, this is projected. So this does this graph doesn't take into account COVID. If it did, you would see another long purple bar right here for the 2021, or is it this one? Either way, the 2021 would be even longer than this one because the recession or the stimulus that was passed a couple months ago for COVID relief was even bigger than the 2008 